Hello friends, this video on neat reproduction is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Germ, germ layers. So there are three germ layers which give rise to specific tissues, organs and organ system. Now what are germ layers? So germ layers are the primary layer of cells which are formed during embryo formation. And what is the speciality of these primary layers of cells? So they lead to the formation of tissues and organs, like the different organs of our body, like heart, kidneys, lungs, stomach, all of these organs are formed from certain cells. And these cells were contained in these three primary layers called the germ layers. Now this process of formation of different various tissues and organs, this process is known as organogenesis. Genesis is basically related to formation. Since it is talking about formation of organs, so it is called organogenesis. Now the question is, how these germ layers lead to the formation of organs and organ systems? So th that happens by a process called differentiation. So what is differentiation then? So differentiation is a process by which cells tissues or organs, they gradually change their structure and function during embryonic development. So when you talk about the germ layers in human beings, there are three germ layers present. So what are those three germ layers? Endoderm, mesoderm and ectoderm. So these are the three germ layers. Now the cells of these germ layers, they differentiate. That means they gradually with time, they change their structure and function and like that, they gradually form some certain specific tissues with a specific function and those tissues then gradually form organs with a specific function. So that's how differentiation of these germ layers happen. Now out of these three germ layers, endoderm is the first layer to start differentiating. Now let us quickly look at uh, an image. So this image clearly shows the three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. So the first image refers to a zygote. What happens immediately after fertilization? After the fusion of the sperm and the ovum, what is the result of fertilization? The result is a zygote, which is a single celled zygote. It's made up of one cell. Now this zygote undergoes mitotic division, in fact repeated mitotic division to form a hollow ball of cells which is called the blastula. Now as I was mentioning some time back that this hollow ball of cells contain gradually develop an outer layer which fixes it to the uterus and there is an inner cell mass which further differentiates to form the embryo. Now this blastula again undergo differentiation and it forms a structure called gastrula and this gastrula has three distinct germ layers. So very distinctly we can see the three germ layers. So this process of blast formation of gastrula from blastula this process is called gastrulation. So this is like the basic of what happens during the initial phases of development. Now let us see where do we see these three germ layers. So if you look at these images, the orange colored layer which you see here, that's ectoderm. So ecto means outside. So ectoderm is the outermost layer. So this orange layer is ectoderm. So this picture actually shows the different stages of development from zygote to blastula to gastrula. And where is endoderm? So the central, so central part which you have inside that is endoderm. The red colored structure in, inside is the endoderm. So if you see that some of the ectoderm cells itself form the endoderm. So in this case you see this was ectoderm, the outermost layer. But some cells of the ectoderm are highlighted in red color. So some cells of the ectoderm gradually form the innermost layer that is the endoderm. Right? And the layer which lies between ectoderm and endoderm that is the mesoderm. So these are the three germ layers. Now since human beings have three germ layers that is why human humans are categorized as triploblastic animals. Triple. Triple means three. So animals with three germ layers are called triploblastic layer. Some lower animals have two germ layers and they are called diploblastic animals. So humans are triploblastic. Now let us see that how each of these three layers, endoderm, mesoderm and ectoderm, how do they differentiate to form various organs. Let us start with the ectoderm derivatives. Ectoderm derivatives means 
the tissues or the organs which are formed by differentiation of ectoderm. So it forms the epidermis of skin, hair and nails that is the outermost layer of skin, hair and nails, enamel of teeth, epidermis of oil and sweat glands, neurons of nervous system, cornea, retina, eye lens, external ear, mammary glands. So if you look at all of these, one easy way to remember is all, most of these are like the external part, like the external part of the ear, the external part of the eye, like cornea or eye lens or retina, mammary glands, epidermis. Epidermis is always the outermost layer of oil and sweat glands, epidermis of skin, hair and nails. So most of the outer layers are formed by ectoderm. Next is mesoderm derivatives. So mesoderm forms the connective tissue. So connective tissue which helps in movement. So connective tissues come from mesoderm, heart, blood vessels, so all the critical things, blood cells, kidneys and ureters, sclera, ciliary body and iris. So what is sclera? Sclera is the white outer layer of the eyeball. So if you look at the eyeball, you can see the white outermost layer, so that's sclera. Ciliary body are nothing but the muscle-like structure which are also called ciliary muscles which control the shape of the eye lens. Cortex of adrenal gland, so adrenal gland is that gland which produces hormones like adrenaline and steroids. So all of these uh, body organs or body parts are derived from mesoderm. Reproductive system is also a derivative of mesoderm except the prostate. Now let's look at the endoderm derivatives. Endoderm forms the epithelium of most of the internal organs like epithelium of trachea, bronchi, lungs. So that's the difference between endoderm and ectoderm. Ectoderm talks about the epidermis of the outer organs like skin, hair, nails, etc. But endoderm talks about the epithelium of the internal organs like trachea, bronchi, lungs. These are present inside our body. You cannot see them from outside. Epithelium of organs like gallbladder, liver, pancreas, epithelium of vagina, epithelium of prostate, epithelium of thyroid and parathyroid glands, epithelium of middle ear and eustachian tube. What's eustachian tube? It's just another name for the auditory tube which connects the uh, nasal pharynx to the middle ear. Epithelium of mouth, tongue, tonsils, stomach and intestines. So endoderm, the term endoderm means inner layer, inner, the innermost germ layer. So this innermost germ layer will form the lining or the epithelium lining of all the internal organs like gallbladder, liver, pancreas, lungs, vagina, prostate, etc. So at this part is very, very crucial from your examination point of view as well because you often get questions asked from uh, the derivatives of the various germ layers. Like you might be given a question where a particular organ is given like uh, from, from where is the epithelium of liver derived? endoderm, ectoderm or mesoderm. So you should be able to know that. So just understand this logic that mesoderm forms most of the vital organs like heart, kidney, ureters, blood vessels, etc. Endoderm forms epithelium of all the internal organs and ectoderm forms the outer layer of outer organs. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.